That ain't the boiler, that. I'd, I'd back up just in case, but what it is, do we? Try and get a line around it. Yeah, and pull it and Try and pull it over, yeah. Just stay, just stay there. Just stay still. Car and van fires are extremely dangerous. An exploding tank of petrol can cause havoc. But a firefighter's biggest worry is liquid petroleum gas. In a vehicle fire, an LPG cylinder is a time bomb waiting to go off. And that's exactly what's just happened. It's early morning, and a firefighter from an East Hull station has been engulfed in a fireball. He's been rushed to hospital. His colleague, firefighter Andy Fendley, saw the horrific incident firsthand. Well, basically, we pulled up to um, just a routine uh, van fire, and um, we uh, got the equipment off as, as normal. And um, basically, uh, the uh, gas cylinder in the back of the van just exploded. It was just a huge, big ball of flame, 30 foot long by about 20 foot high, just like a huge blowtorch. And he just disappeared in it, just disappeared. And then at the end, he just came running out and. He was just on fire from head to foot. The first thing every firefighter has to expect is the totally unexpected. Senior Fire Officer Nick Granger has 22 years service, but it's completely unpredictable incidents like this that reminds him and his colleagues of the dangers they face. Reality is this can happen with any vehicle. Firefighters attend probably, you know, across the brigade, 20, 30 vehicles a day on fire, and they never know when this is a situation they're going to be faced with. And that's the reality of being a firefighter, you know, it, it is an inherently dangerous occupation. This controlled exercise graphically recreates what eyewitnesses say happened. With no markings to indicate the vehicle is run on LPG, a firefighter tackling the blaze would be just a few feet away. Father of Jenny and husband of Angela, Andy Bellamy was that firefighter. This demonstration shows the kind of fireball Andy was exposed to. The action of his colleagues and his fire clothing most definitely saved his life. Uh, shouted at him to, to roll and grabbed him and threw him on the floor and we just rolled him and rolled him and put a reel on him and you know got water on him um, and, and just you know put the fire out. Hull Central Fire Station gets plenty of call outs to fire alarms going off. It's not being in the street, is it? Don't... They usually false alarms, but Matty and the guys know from experience that every call can be unpredictable. They've had a call from a member of the staff or whoever from the premise saying it's a definite false alarm. But the alarm has been raised, so they need to check it out. They're kitting themselves out with breathing apparatus so they can be deployed if needed. I've tried resetting it, and I've silenced it um, three times, you know, and it's just uh, started it's just gone off again. It's so, uh, these two people just come out. There, there is a, a couple of flats that we can't get into, so... You've got to silence it. Crew manager Pete Sissons gets an update from the caretaker. Nine times out of ten, it's somebody smoking, and, and what we do, silence it. He says he's knocked on all the doors, but that doesn't explain why the alarm is still sounding. Matty and Glynn are sent to investigate further. You know what, stay up here, Matty. Stay we're not sure it's full of smoke, so. I've got to get a water extinguisher. Just looking at the LPG tank, and I can see that it's uh, split on the top, allowed the contents to escape and vaporise immediately. Steve Waterson runs Humberside Fire's health and safety unit. He's been called to the LPG van explosion. He needs to work out what happened. That's been quite a fireball, isn't it? And it's caught the window frames there. Just looking at the extent of the, uh, the flame, see where if I can get an idea of where the flame from. It obviously went beyond the gutter. The lads got here, it was uh, just a car on fire. Um, they got a couple of hose reels off and started to tackle the fire. And then 
was a loud explosion. A fireball just shot straight down the drive and it engulfed the, uh, the firefighter that was at the front. What began as a probable false alarm has become a full-scale search for the occupier. Cheap pan fire. They've actually dealt with it <coughs> quite thick. Um, right. Matty's just radioed through to say there's no one inside, but there wouldn't be because the person who lives here has just returned from a friend's and she's standing shell-shocked in the hallway. Have you just come back? You haven't, been, you haven't, you haven't been breathing any smoking then? No, no, no. no, no. You've just come back, I you've got to survive. I thought I turned it yeah, down, yeah. I was trying to put it on one. Yeah. Yeah. Typical um, example of where people get just a bit complacent that use of the fire alarm going off. You know, maybe, maybe eight times, nine times out of ten, it is a false alarm, but it proved it wasn't this time. Could have been somebody in here. Could have been. Could have been not a very nice situation, shall we say. All it's going to want is a good clean, really. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a result, really, isn't it? It's going to be off for a while, so I don't start clearing it straight away. Just thinking I'm such an idiot, that's all. Don't worry. That's been a little bit of a warning. You see, we've got a guy downstairs who was trying to silence the alarm. We've got to remember, girls, is every time you hear the alarm, you've got to evacuate the building. Sure. I mean, if yeah. anybody had been in here, they'd have probably been unconscious by the time we got in, because it was quite heavily smart locked. No, it's awful stupid, but um, <laughs> I'm just going to put on my life, really. Winter storms have been battering East Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire, with winds gusting up to 80 miles an hour. Right across the region, people are calling in to report dangerous structures. Pete and the guys now have an 18 mile dash from Hull to Hornsey. It's been a quite a busy period now, it's been a bad night and people have, uh, people have got up and started noticing things like dangerous areas, dangerous chimneys. The winds have blown over a two ton chimney onto the roof of the house and another one is threatening to topple over. They're taking the 200 foot high hydraulic platform to assist the fire crews already at the scene. It's a situation the firefighters don't face every day. Um, so, uh, as long as we're uh, back at station for two o'clock this afternoon, it's time to get to the football. <laughs> Steve Waterson and Nick Granger want to look in detail at the fire kit worn by Andy Bellamy, the firefighter engulfed in a fireball taking pictures and thoroughly assessing the damage will help them and others in the service appreciate what Andy's been through. It's a brittle, isn't it? But you've gone to the point where it's actually, you know, disintegrated. I mean, we know it's had a bit of hammer, but to have actually disintegrated, the temperature has been extreme, hasn't it? A firefighter's protective clothing is designed to withstand temperatures in excess of 800 degrees centigrade. The damage to the van involved and to his entire fire kit would suggest Andy was subjected to temperatures much greater than that. And the photographs taken at the hospital earlier today show the horrific burns to Andy's face. There's uncertainty over whether Andy will ever return to work as a firefighter. We do quite often see on tunics when they're exposed to heat, yellowing where it starts to lose a little bit of colour, that's not unusual. Um, but to see something like this is... <laughs> unusual in the extreme, you know, this is uh, just a thing. What are you going through? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, thank goodness that this was a firefighter wearing fire kit and not a member of the public in normal clothing. Had someone been dressed like this and exposed to that level of heat, you know, doesn't bear thinking about, literally. Just get where we can't at the engine, mate. <laughs> the owners of the house awoke to a dull thud at four o'clock this morning. It wasn't until daylight they realised the noise they heard was their chimney. To make matters worse, the second chimney is wobbling and in danger of crashing down. Um, but the other one is wobbling like mad. Really, we need to dismantle well, that. I think really. what we'll do is we'll try and get a alarm around it. Yeah. Pull it and down. Try and pull it over. Yeah. There's, there's a few few tons of uh, rubble waiting to come down up there, so it definitely needs dealing with and dealing with now. So. Whereas Pete's task involves plain demolition. Rob and the guys in Scunthorpe will need a more tactful approach to solve their conundrum. 
the high winds have loosened tiles and a cross on top of the local church. Forty-five miles north in Hornsey, the winds are picking up again. Pete and the guys have attached a rope to the chimney. Their plan is to pull the two-ton structure into the street. Attach a line to the chimney that's still up because it's very unstable. We're going to try and pull it over into the road before it actually happens. We, we, you know, we're going to try and make it happen uh, due to the uh, severe danger that it's, it is presenting to the public. If they leave the chimney, it could topple onto the roof that is already feeling the strain. There's no standard procedure for jobs like this. It's down to common sense and the pull of six firefighters. We're going rocking. You don't want any bricks bouncing towards you, do you? No. Winter gales have already blown over one chimney and the other is wobbling precariously. But it won't be the elements that decide its fate. It'll be these six firefighters at the end of their rope, under the watchful eye of crew manager Pete Sissons. You see there'll be a few tons worth of weight uh, in that chimney stack. We're going rocking. OK. Stand back. Apparently the occupiers of the house were just underneath in the front bedroom here. I mean, the potential of that falling through was was quite big, really. Um, so they were very lucky, very lucky to escape, really. Oh, incredibly lucky. Um, initially, when, when you see what's happened, you think, oh, my God, what, what are we going to do? And then you realise you're safe. You know, she's quite jovial, really, having a, a, a bit of a giggle about it as well, which is good. But uh, potentially, you know, that, that, that could have been a fatality that was going to this morning. So, yeah, she's, she's very lucky. Occupiers are very, very lucky, really. Across East Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire, the winds are keeping firefighters busy. At a church in Scunthorpe, a delicate operation is underway to remove roof tiles and stone slabs, and even a loose cross. You watch, we'll take this bit off and then the top layer of bricks will come off and they'll have to come off. Rob's an experienced firefighter. He's saved a handful of lives in his three years on the job. He's dragged animals from danger, cut passengers from smashed cars. But this is his first cross rescue and it's serious work. He's left a bit of concrete a bit unstable at the top there, Luke. That'll have to come down as well. As long as there's police presence, the police we stop any pedestrians because the tiles right. the will still stand down. Down. But we can't, we can't strip the full room. Never mind, nobody's been there, have they? No. no that's the yeah. yeah. Everyone's OK. So. Yeah. Pulling the chimney down was the easy bit. Trying to report back to control over airways jammed with busy fire crews is equally unpredictable. XT Alpha 11. What's on there? XT Alpha 11. XT Alpha 11. Alpha Alpha One Station. Bit productive. We've uh, we've been and helped, haven't we? We've made a little bit of a difference this morning, so it's all been worthwhile. It's half eleven now. We've got time to go to go to the football and then come back to work. That's it. That's that's my day. <laughs> Back for another night shift. Uh, hopefully it'll oh, yeah. die down a bit tonight, otherwise we'll see him again. It's early evening, and all day crews have been out making dangerous structures safe. At Hull Central, the day shift is about to finish. But now they've an emergency. There's been a report of smoke coming from a factory. But when they get there, there's a sweet smell in the air, vapour rising from the floor, and tanks of chemicals behind a locked gate. Yeah. It's coming from it. the drain, isn't it? It smells like soap, isn't it? Yeah. Keith Walkington is the officer in charge. A worker from a nearby factory has called the owner on the phone. He's telling them not to worry. OK, so if you're from the vehicle, then we'll wait for that. We've just got in contact with the key holder and 
they've done some sort of process where they shut down the boilers and that's all steam and a process from that. The boilers are no, right over there, there's a pipe beyond the side of the building. That ain't the boiler, that. Right, don't do then. Get the short X off. Let's get over the gear. Let's have they a look. said it's a steam off a boiler, but that ain't steam off a boiler. You can see it across the floor. Do you think that smells, Phil? I'd, I'd back up. You want me stood there just in case, but what it is, do we? It may well be steam, but it's, it's some unknown vapour with a sweet smell to it. We don't want to be stood in it if it's uh, if all's going to go wrong, do we? Pete and the crew are back on shift and they're about to take another step into the unknown. It's uh, the man in handcuffs. We don't tend to cut them out unless the police have given us approval to do it. Just in case you are an absconded prisoner. We've lost the keys. When they get there, the man is extremely embarrassed. He's fully handcuffed and wearing military fatigues. What's the dynamic here then? I've uh, been out and it's been a pants stress party. We need to confirm with our control that we can get permission to cut these off by the police, uh, you see. Because you'll appreciate that, although you don't I look don't think I'm an absconded no, prisoner. No. Uh, and you got no ID on you? No. Got your, is that your flat key? I've, that's all I've got, but there's nothing in there. Yeah, we don't want to be a pain, but obviously we don't want to wear... We don't want to be... I mean, you've got like military uniform on, haven't you? you I've been to a pants dress party. Have you? Yeah. Where was that at? Just in town. It's not every day they're called yeah. to release men dressed as soldiers from handcuffs. <laughs> all right. So what's your fat like then, all right? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. So what were your mates now then? They're just and left you, have yeah. they? The factory owner says the smoke and strange smell is nothing to worry about and he's on his way. But they can't take his word for granted. In the meantime, they seal off the area to passers-by. They've no idea what the smell might be. We don't want to walk into it until more sure about what it is. We're still going to let traffic come through the road. We're going to stop people walking by pedestrians just in case there's any risk of anybody bringing anything in what we're not sure of at the moment. It's a sweet smell like a... Well, there is a chemical there. I mean, Bob was just saying from North Pole, there is something like that. That is quite nasty, but smells quite sweet. And it's all right, somebody's saying on the phone it's steam, but he could be covering up for that, I know, couldn't he? He could have been washing something out he shouldn't have done. And, have, you know, and then he could have been saying, oh, yeah, it's steamed up, break into my premise. With our bolt croppers, what we'll do is we'll cut... We'll cut. I mean, we might be able to get in there, but they're quite cumbersome, so we'll probably... Chris is standing that. guard until Pete checks the man's we'll ID. To it, mate, to see if Has he really off. just been at a party? Yeah. But, and busy, who he says he is. Just, well, I just want to get a, ask a couple more questions. And... The worry is that he is a, a, a convict somewhere, helping somebody escape. Um, I don't think this chap is. But they're quite cumbersome, so we'll probably end up cutting that, and then we'll have to leave you to it, mate. It's right. just hot water from the boilers. Right, it doesn't smell like hot water, though, does it? it At the like factory, the owner has turned up and he's got a straightforward explanation for the strange smell and smoke. OK, so what, what are you supposing this is? This is paint out the... We've, we've worked overtime tonight and cleaned, so, been cleaning the spray boat out. So but where is the steam coming the from? The steam's coming from... There's a blow-down for the, for the boiler, and it's just the boiler water. Yeah. Just wanted to be sure what, yeah. you know, what the vapour was. It's probably my mistake. I hadn't yeah. considered it from that perspective and certainly would in the future. Um, that's what we can do if you yeah, get in touch with your mates and see if we can get hold of the key. But I already come to the police station, but I've been dr drinking. Yeah. 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 I don't want to drink and drive. All right, mate. Oh, Done the best thing right. anyway there. Okay. All right, mate. Thanks a lot anyway. See you. Have a good evening. We do see a lot of different things, but it's like if you now go to Chris's house, you'd find a bloke blow with <laughs> your face on it. <laughs> I'm extremely sorry to have right. troubled you in that way, but obviously, yeah. They've just packed up at the factory, and straight away, they've another emergency. <laughs> a man has jumped into the river. <laughs> the crew already at the scene have secured a rope around him. They need to get him out quickly before the mud pulls him under. No, you're right. We don't want you to. Just stay there. Just stay well, still. Somebody's coming down. You're all right. Oh, we've got swings on 1-1. Just sent Kev down to try and get a line round him and also just to reassure him. All right, 
he's coming up. Kevin, yeah. come up with him. Can we get him up the ladder now? Nice and easy, nice and easy. Hey, Pull his line tight. You've got a line on him. Keep walking. All right, you're there. Keep right up. Come on, Sit on. That's it, cadet. Relax. 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 It's been five months since the accident that almost cost Andy Bellamy his life. He was tackling a run-of-the-mill vehicle fire when the LPG fuel tank exploded. The only thing I remember seeing really was this, just this ball of flame coming towards me. Instinctively, I think, I turned my head away from it and I also shut my mouth, closed my eyes. His instinct to turn away, swift acting colleagues, and his protective clothing saved his life. Had I been not been able to get out of the way as well, I, mean, I was only in it for three or four seconds, and it completely burnt through the back of my shoe. I wouldn't like to say what would happen, really. Well, because I don't think I'd have been here, no. His skin is still so sensitive, it's unlikely Andy will ever return to work as a firefighter. See the smoke now. Make sure you have.